Ever since we heard Obi-Wan's disembodied voice, Force ghosts have become incredibly prevalent in the main story of the Skywalker saga, despite us having little knowledge of how or why they appear. So, how did they become Force ghosts? How come some Jedi get to live forever and others don't? In this video, I'm going to discuss the specific trials of becoming a Force ghost and how each one of these characters completed them. The only character in this roster of grim grinning Jedi that we see actually trained to become a force ghost is Yoda. He is instructed by the spirit of Qui-Gon to seek out help and begin his training. Yoda travels to the mysterious wellspring of the force where he is then greeted by five priestesses of the force. They task him with completing three trials. In his first trial, Yoda must face his darkest self and accept it as part of him. His second trial is to prevail over temptation by accepting the emotions of confusion, anger, and sadness in order to achieve serenity or balance. And the third trial is for Yoda to face his ultimate fear, which manifests in the form of the Sith Lords controlling the galaxy. Yoda is able to sacrifice himself for the ones he loves and is then congratulated on his first steps to becoming a Force Ghost. Now, beyond this, it is implied that it takes more years of practice to achieve life after death, but we know for a fact that these three trials must be faced. So, if we saw Yoda complete them, how did the others? Well, let's apply these three trials to all of our other spectral friends. Always remember, your focus determines your reality. Stay close to me, and you'll be safe. Qui-Gon states that he was chosen by the priestesses to achieve this power after death. That is why his body did not disappear as his training was incomplete. But we can actually identify at least one of these trials being completed for him. In the Age of Republic Qui-Gon one-shot comic, Qui-Gon allows the Force to guide him to a mysterious planet. He is then confronted with manifestations of the dark side to which he immediately attacks with his lightsaber. After defeating them, he realizes that they are fallen Jedi and is then consumed by the dark side. This experience serves as a lesson that violence is never the true answer to a problem and makes Qui-Gon face his darkest, most violent self. The Force is what gives the Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. With Obi-Wan, we know for a fact that Qui-Gon and Yoda both train him in how to become a Force Ghost, but we're actually able to see Obi-Wan complete all of these three main trials. Obi-Wan's greatest failure was Anakin Skywalker. He allowed the Dark Lord to be manipulated and twisted and then had to murder what was left of him. This was Obi-Wan's darkest moment. Obi-Wan accepted his failure and promised to never fail again with Luke, therefore facing his most evil self and conquering it. This trial is a little more up to interpretation, but I think Obi-Wan abates his temptation by allowing Luke to live with the Lars family for most of his life. Obi-Wan could have easily been selfish and kept Luke as his own and trained him from birth, but instead followed the will of the Force and protected him instead. Obi-Wan faces his greatest fear in the form of his fallen apprentice, Darth Vader. He must face the twisted machine of a man that he created and then sacrifices himself to save Luke, who he knows will bring balance to the Force for all time. You were right about me. Tell your sister. You were right. Anakin's journey to become a Force Ghost perplexed me for years, and I always assumed he gained eternal life simply because he was the Chosen One, but now in the context of these three trials, his ascendance makes perfect sense. I think Anakin facing his darkest self is pretty obvious. At the end of his life, he rejects Darth Vader and destroys the evil Emperor who turned him into a Dark Lord. Anakin finally throws away his temptation in his final moments as well. <laughs> Literally. All of his life, he wanted to be stronger and to bring order to the galaxy, but he was able to put his lust for power aside in order to bring true peace to the galaxy. In his turmoil while watching Luke be tortured, Anakin relives his worst fears that have echoed throughout his entire life, losing his loved ones. Anakin lost Shmi, Ahsoka, and Padme, and now has found the last person in the galaxy that loves him, even after all he has done. Anakin puts aside his selfish need for control and faces his fear of loss by sacrificing himself for his son. And this is 
missed the lesson. That force does not belong to the Jedi. To say that if the Jedi die, the light dies is vanity. Can you feel that? With Luke, we can easily infer that Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Yoda taught him how to become a Force ghost over the years, but we can actually see him complete all three of these trials on screen. Luke facing his darkest self can be interpreted in many ways, and most people would assume that this moment in The Last Jedi is his darkest moment. But I feel like Luke's first real confrontation with his darkest self was this moment. No! All of his life, Luke was searching for adventure and purpose, and to be like his amazing father, and to become a Jedi like his father, he must kill Darth Vader. Luke must confront his hatred for Vader and now deal with the revelation that he is his own flesh and blood. Luke eventually accepts this and becomes the Jedi he is meant to be. During the final battle on the second Death Star, Luke is constantly tempted to destroy his father and join the dark side. He grows angrier and angrier when thinking about the loss of his friends until he finally defeats Vader. For a brief moment he is tempted by darkness and hate, but he discards his lightsaber and proclaims himself and his father a Jedi. Luke's worst fear is very apparent throughout the films and comes to a head during his flashback to training a young Ben Solo. In a moment of fear and weakness, Luke considers striking down Ben Solo and ends up creating Kylo Ren, just as Obi-Wan failed Anakin. Luke has always been afraid of losing his friends and now he has not only failed his nephew, but failed his sister and dear friend Han. He finally faces this moment head on as he reconciles his failures as a master and then sacrifices himself for the survival of the resistance. I know. Somehow. I've always known. Leia is one that I think perplexed many people, as her time spent as a Jedi was very short, but we can actually see her complete some of these trials. Facing her darkest self is something we do not see Leia do on screen, but I would argue that her story in Claudia Gray's novel Bloodline exemplifies this. The truth leaks that she is the daughter of Darth Vader and she is then outcast from Republic politics. She is unable to make positive change in the government and has lost the respect of the people. Through all of this pain, Leia still manages to start the resistance and help to light the fire that will burn the First Order down. Leia's experience with temptation is very limited to what we see on screen as well, but I do think there is some merit for us to believe that she overcame this trial off screen. We know that she rebelled against Chancellor Mon Mothma and started the resistance, as Mothma did not see the First Order as a threat and in turn would not create a Republic army. This might be the best example of Leia overcoming temptation, as it would have been very easy for her to retire and believe the galaxy is safe, but instead she continues to rebel and starts the organization that will save the galaxy. Leia's final trial and one of her most important moments in the films is her reaching out to her son, one last time. Leia stretches her voice across the galaxy and calls out to Ben. In this pivotal moment, Leia destroys her fear that her son is gone and in turn sacrifices herself to save Ben Solo. Just as the other Jedi, Leia proves herself worthy of these trials and saves her son who will then save the galaxy. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Last but certainly not least, Ben Solo. I think his transition into eternal life made sense for many people because just like Grandpappy, he was the bad guy who became good. But now with these trials in mind, we can concretely see why he was granted this power. Facing his darkest self I think is pretty clear in The Rise of Skywalker. When Ben Solo has been healed by Rey, he is confronted by his darkest moment. Hey kid. While this is just beautiful cinema on its own, we as lore junkies get to see Ben Solo confront his worst deed as Kylo Ren and then literally cast out Kylo of his life. Ben's rejection of temptation could be interpreted in a few ways, but the one that stands out to me is his rejection of Snoke. All of his life, Ben was manipulated by Snoke and is finally able to destroy him. He could have easily killed Rey and ruled the galaxy as a dark lord, but he chose a different path. He broke his chains and started down his path to redemption. 
I believe Ben's worst fear is that people will never see him as an individual. He was born of the mighty Skywalker blood and named after one of the most legendary Jedi ever. But time and time again, Ben wants nothing to do with this legacy. He rejects this pressure and becomes his own entity, Kylo Ren. He is then redeemed by Rey, someone who loves him as he is, Ben Solo. Not his legacy or his destiny, him. When Rey dies saving the galaxy, Ben heals her, thus saving the only person in the galaxy who truly understood him and the only person who can carry on the legacy of the Jedi. In turn, he gives his life for the one he loves and the legacy she will bring. Now, I know what you're thinking. If all you have to do is complete these trials, how come everyone in the galaxy doesn't become a Force ghost? Short answer? Long answer, because not everyone in the galaxy intentionally follows the will of the Force. When Yoda finds the mysterious Force planet, he decides to submit and let the Force guide him. This is the entry-level test to complete the trials at all. People who do not consciously let the Force guide them, although yes, they become one with the Force, are not able to retain their consciousness after death. So, we've gone over every Force ghost we've seen, so I guess that's about it. Oh. Oh, no. Look, the film is up for interpretation, so if you really want to believe that every one of the Jedi that speak to Rey either completed these trials or was somehow brought into the Cosmic Force, fine by me. But personally, I like to think that some and or most of these voices are just echoes of the Force and not literal people talking to her. I don't know, that's just what I think. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your interpretations in the comments and what other aspects of canon you'd like to hear me discuss next. Have a good one, and may the Force be with you.